Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, I'm gonna go over some Paris travel tips. As you know, I have been here for the entire month. I'm gonna go over things like where to stay, how to get around, and how much can you do on your trips. I've been to Paris five times and I've stayed in each different neighborhood. And what I can tell you is that what neighborhood you stay in will really dictate kind of style and trip to Paris. You could be staying near the Eiffel Tower in a more local neighborhood, it's a bit quieter, or you can stay in the middle of it all by the Louvre. Each Paris neighborhood has a totally different vibe. So being here for a month, I can really see how each completely different. And what you'll find in Paris is more boutique hotels rather than bigger chains. However, you can stay in a larger American chain here in Paris, but most likely you'll find smaller family owned boutique style hotels throughout Paris. And when you're looking for hotels in Paris, you'll probably see a number associated with it. And that is the arrondissement starting from one all the way up to 18. And the lower the number, that means it's closer to the Seine and more closer to the central part of Paris. So you could stay in the one, the two, the three, the four, the five, the six, the seven, and so on. So it goes around in a circle and all of these different arrondissements have a different vibe. So let me talk to you about what each one is kind of all about. So the first arrondissement is where the Louvre is. It's very bustling and busy. You also have Rue Saint Honoré, which is where all the luxury shopping happens. This would be a great place to stay. However, in Paris, because it's so connected by the Metro, I don't think you have to stay right next to the Louvre. You could stay in the second arrondissement, which still is very touristy. The three and the four is Les Marais, which is a cool, trendy neighborhood. That is where we're staying currently right now in Paris. And here you'll find more boutique shops, cool cafes, restaurants, so many good restaurants around the corner. During our stay here, we've actually just been been able to walk to restaurants because there's just so many good options in these two arrondissements. And you can also find a lot of museums here as well. And it is still close to everything else in Paris and it's really connected well by the Metro. You could also stay in the Latin Quarter, which has a beautiful kind of Parisian charm to it. It feels very luxe and you can also find great cafes and shopping in the Latin Quarter. You could also stay near the Eiffel Tower. And for the past couple times in Paris, I've opted to stay towards the Eiffel Tower and what I tell you is this the only monument by the Eiffel Tower is basically the Eiffel Tower so you're gonna find more residential neighborhoods there's not as many cafes and shopping over there mostly just the Eiffel Tower so if you want to do anything else in Paris check out a popular restaurant go to any other museum you're going to have to take the train to get over there if you're looking for a more like quiet neighborhood I recommend the Eiffel Tower but you will have to be taking the train to get to some dinners and some other things to do in Paris just because it kind of is separated from all the other touristy things to do. And you also have Montmartre, which is located on top of a hill. I've never stayed in this neighborhood, but it has a really cool, fun charm to it. And I will say that because it's located on a hill, you are kind of separated from the other things to do in Paris. So it is an option. Where you stay is definitely dependent on your budget. Paris hotels can range from very expensive to more affordable, and it really depends on the neighborhood that you stay in. I always use booking.com to book my accommodations because they tell you the main price that you're going to check out with rather than like Airbnb they tell you per night and when you go to check out it's like a completely different number because they have so many other fees but with booking.com that is where I book all of my accommodations for every trip because you can just see what the total price is and if you stay like a few nights with them you have like joined their loyalty program and you can even save on top of stays but I will leave a booking.com QR code right up here if you want to start browsing for Paris hotels and p.s if you are coming during high season it is best to book your hotel accommodation asap especially in this year of the olympics it is going to get busy in paris the staff that we've been talking to everyone is preparing it's going to be a really really busy season this year so definitely get your accommodations booked as soon as possible and if you are debating between a hotel or an Airbnb or apartment style accommodation, you can find great options for both. A hotel will have more of like a concierge team, which can help you get dinner reservations and they can help you plan things on your stay. Usually they also have some sort of like a breakfast option as well if you want to have breakfast at your hotel or if you prefer an apartment style stay in Paris, up to you. But booking.com has both options available. So if I had to help you pick a neighborhood to stay in, I would say if you want to 
to be in the middle of it all. Stay near a metro station because that is the way that you're going to be getting around the most efficiently and quickly. So if you stay near any kind of metro, you're going to be really well connected throughout Paris. But if I had to pick where to stay in Paris, it really depends on what you're looking for. If you want to be in the middle of the shopping, if you want to be near the luxury and tourist attractions, I would say either in the one or the two. If you want something a bit more local, low key, but you want to be connected to great restaurants, boutiques, I would say in the three or the four. And if you want something a bit quieter away from the hustle and bustle, I would say in the seven by the Eiffel Tower. And if you want something a bit artistic and different, you could stay in Montmartre, but just know Montmartre is located on a hill. So it will require plenty of steps and stairs. And if you have a lot of luggage, that might be an issue. So how to get around Paris? Let me tell you, we've been in Paris for one month and we have not used one Uber once because the Metro is so connected throughout the entire bits of Paris, even at night, you can get around by Metro. It is not 24 hours though, so you can't go on the Metro late at night, but I wouldn't do that anyway. You can get anywhere in Paris on the Metro and from one end to Paris to the other, it takes approximately 30 minutes just to get from one end to the other, but most likely you might be just going from one neighborhood to the next and your metro ride is only about 10 15 minutes of course they do have uber here if you want to go to a dinner or you want you're just dressed up you don't feel like taking the metro they absolutely do have uber here they don't have lyft and the only uber that we've taken is to and from the airport so if you want to use that that's an option as well. So to get around Paris, you want to use a Navigo pass. You can use paper tickets when you buy them in the machine. It's a one way ticket. You use it once and you throw it away. They are phasing out these paper tickets. So if you plan on coming to Paris, you might want to consider getting the Navigo pass. So this pass is about two or three euro just to have the pass, but it lasts 10 years and you can add money to this pass on their phone app or on a station. I honestly love using the phone app because you can do it in the comfort of your own place that you're staying on your own Wi-Fi, and I have to worry about you know pickpockets or anything in the station so you can re-up at home you can see how many rides you have left you just tap and you go into the metro now navigating the metro is not as crazy as it looks on a map like I would definitely look at a Paris metro map there are plenty of other videos to show you how to navigate the metro but the easiest way that we found to use the metro to find out what station to go to and how to get there is just by using Google before we go somewhere we just tap and to Google like where we want to go and Google will recommend the metro that would take you there and it will give you the direction that you are supposed to go head into so it could be if we want to go to the Galleries Lafayette we would take the eight Ballard bound train and we would stop at this stop and you can just easily navigate it that way so Google Maps is really helpful as to where you can go or you can study the map yourself and kind of figure it out but honestly just use Google and it will help you get around Paris and when you are looking at Ballard bound or Cretil bound those are the last stops on that train so it's the direction that you're going to Ballard is in the southern part of Paris so that goes one direction and Cretil is in the opposite direction it is kind of challenging if you don't know which ones which we don't know which ones which half of the time when you're heading to the train definitely know what direction you're going into and you can find your stops on that way and there are signs as soon as you're going into the metro you should see your stop on that sign if you don't you're going in the wrong direction and to leave the metro just follow the exit signs you cannot exit the way you enter so follow the sortie signs and you'll leave the metro in a nice orderly fashion and just note the RER trains are different than the regular metro trains those are their kind of like suburban trains they are more expensive and that is the train that you would take to Versailles if you are planning on that one don't take that one more expensive and it's made for more suburban travel all right let's talk about food because I'm always hungry and I'm always love trying new food the food in Paris so firstly I got in a lot of comments on why I eat Italian food in France and I just want to clear the room there are so many different cuisines here in paris yes i definitely recommend checking out a french bistro or a french brasserie if you want to have other cuisines they have basically every cuisine that you can think of it is a major city so you can find great italian food you can find great spanish like tapas style food here you can find great middle eastern food as well so you have the option of trying anything you would like so you can absolutely have great italian food in france so in 
a French bistro or brasserie, you will find a menu a little bit confusing. Entrees are actually appetizers and plots are actually their main course. So we're looking at entrees. It's not a larger meal. It's a smaller portion. And if you want to try some typical French cuisine, I would recommend trying the, a French onion soup, a steak tartare, a steak entrecote, which is cut up steak and fries. So delicious. Have a thing for escargot. Like sign me up. They are so good. If you have not tried snails yet, you must try it in a French brasserie or beast. Trust me, you need to try it. They're so good. And of course the French desserts are to die for. You have profiteroles, you have chocolate mousse. Like the food here, I think I've never had good French food because on this trip specifically, I've been craving all of the amazing French cuisine here. And if you want to go to any restaurant, I would recommend making reservations, especially coming up to the high travel season. We're here right now in winter and some restaurants are booked out already. So if you are coming in spring, summer, fall, when the weather is a bit nicer, the reservations are going to be a must. So definitely check out some restaurants to check out in Paris. I am writing a best restaurants in Paris blog post that we've tried. So I will leave that link down below in the description box for my personal recommendations of where we ate. Let's talk about shopping. And before I start the shopping in Paris, I'm going to say it's unmatched, unmatched. The shopping here is incredible. I'm not the person that is like always trying to go shopping, but in Paris, I've changed because the shopping here is so good. You're going to find like the Zara's, the mangoes, our favorite kind of stores that we have in the US, but you're also going to find amazing thrift stores. You're going to find amazing boutiques. You're going to find stunning malls. Galleries Lafayette is gorgeous. It's absolutely stunning six levels of shiny sparkly things and the reason why the shopping in Paris is so good is that things are less expensive than the US and as a US citizen we can take advantage of their tax refund system if you spend over 100 euros in one receipt you can get your tax back and the tax here is 20% so I recently bought my mom a Poland bag the Poland bag was 420 euros and after the tax it'll be 350 euros so that's how less expensive it is and in the US that bag is over six $600. So I said it is it is honestly sometimes a bit overwhelming because there's just so many great deals to be have had and that also applies to high end luxury. So if you were eyeing up a designer purse, definitely Paris is the place to buy it. But remember those to get your tax refund back, you have to shop in a consecutive three days. So if you're here for five days, you can't tax refund your whole trip. You have to pick three days in a row to shop to get your tax refund. So we've been here for a month and we can only shop for three days in a row to get our tax refunds. They will ask you for your passport to get your refund. So bring that along with you when you shop or you can take a picture of your passport. I bring mine in person just in case they don't accept a photo of it. So bring your passport when you go shopping. Now where to shop in Paris? I recommend shopping near the Opera Garnier. You will find Galleries Lafayette there. You will find like four Zara's. You will also find like Zara Home, H&M Home. The stores are so good. So in that area, you're going to find so much shopping and you'll also find luxury shopping on Rue Saint Honoré. That is where they have all of the designer boutiques. They have Goyard, they have Hermes, Guerlain. They have all of the high-end luxury, Louis Vuitton, everything on that street. But if you're looking for something a bit unique, thrift shop, smaller boutiques, I would head to Le Marais. They have really cool, unique shops over there. Now, what to wear in Paris. Now, I'm not going to tell you like wear this, wear that, but the reason why what you wear is important is because you don't want to be a target for anything shady. I will talk about safety later in this video. Parisians have a more simple style. It is put together and tailored. So in the winter time, you could see anyone wearing jeans, a nice wool coat, some boots or sneakers and a big scarf. Like it's very simple crossbody bag. You won't see, I feel like is berets or people dressed up too, too much, like wearing too many things because you don't want to be a target for anything. The Parisians are to have natural makeup, natural hair, simple but elegant style. I wouldn't overly, overly dress up if you don't want to be targeted. And let's just talk about safety real quick. Paris is absolutely safe, but you definitely have to look out for pickpockets, especially in major sites like Trocadero, the train stations near the Louvre, because there are people actually 
looking for people to rob it is what it is <laughs> the more you look like a local the less you'll be targeted that's why i say it is important to kind of blend in a great tip that i've learned if you want to blend in go to the grocery store and buy a reusable bag here the grocery store is monopri if you want to blend in especially if you're a single female traveler you will be taken for a local because why would a tourist have a reusable grocery bag that's one of my favorite tips for traveling into a foreign country you will be fine in paris just be really cautious of your belongings when you're on the train have your arm over your bag opt for bag with a zipper is a great idea don't have any valuables in your pockets have like your cell phone your wallet inside your purse or bag and just be careful with using your phone on the metro just to stay safe i'm sure you will have a great time but there are people looking out for people who are easily to rob and that is just the reality of the situation so the more you blend in i feel like the better chance you will not be target for that kind of petty crime do you need to speak French when traveling to Paris? Well, um, I would say definitely the Parisians will very much appreciate you saying bonjour. It is on every video that you watch for visiting Paris. And for real, it is a thing. Like you need to say bonjour for real. When you are walking up to someone, it is just their kind of formality that they use here. And it's definitely expected and appreciated. We have not had a problem not speaking French for a month, but we definitely open up with bonjour. And then from there we go, um, parlez-vous anglais and then it's like yes or no and if they don't speak english we make it work we have google translate on our phone it's also a great thing to have google translate for translating menus because the restaurants that we've been going to do not always have an english menu so you take a picture of the menu and google translate will translate it for you sometimes it's kind of hit or miss but we have been making it work that way majority we have been okay getting around not speaking french but we definitely open with a bonjour and au revoir or bonsoir at at night and it's helped us through our trip to Paris. Next question, how many days do you need in Paris? Obviously, the more the better. The more days you have in Paris, the more that you can do. But I understand that's not everyone's realistic ability to stay however long. So if you can, I would recommend at least four full days. So five nights, four full days, because coming into Paris, getting in your hotel, you're tired from your flight, that travel day to me, always a wash. I usually just like to walk around the neighborhood and kind of get my bearings. But I would recommend four full days. We did four full days on our trip last April and we had the ability Ability to go on a half day trip to Versailles. We saw museums. We basically saw every neighborhood. I do have a vlog on our four day trip to Paris. I will leave it up here so you can watch what we do on four days. And if you're looking to do day trips, just add on a day for day trips. Day trip opportunities from Paris could be Epernay. You could go to Champagne, France. You could go to the Loire Valley, which is where the castles are and have wine tasting out there. If you want to do those, I would add on a day. But let me tell you, there is so much to do in Paris. We have been here for a month and we still have have not done everything there's just so much to do so i think paris is a place that you come back to and do more and discover more but if you are coming for your first time i would definitely do your highlight big bus tour we absolutely love that big bus tour because you literally see everything in about two hours and you can hop on and off and explore where you are leading to so absolutely recommend that for your first time visit you'll see a lot on that big bus tour i would check out a museum the louvre is amazing but we also love the Musée d'Orsay which has amazing and impressionist art and it isn't as big as the Louvre so it's not as overwhelming. The Louvre is ginormous. It will take you hours to go through the full thing. You have neighborhoods to explore. You have shopping to do and there's also delicious dining that you need to take advantage of. So there is so much to do in Paris. Obviously the more the better and if you only have a three days in Paris you can do a lot. Just know it's going to be exhausting so definitely take your time exploring but you can do a lot in one day. You could do a museum, you could have a lunch or people watch at a cafe. You could do a sightseeing tour. You could do like the big bus tour. You could do a Seine River cruise. You could go up the Eiffel Tower. At night, you could even have a Seine dinner cruise so you can see the Seine and have dinner at the same time. There are so many options of what you could do in one day, but the more days you have, the better. And one of my biggest tips for sightseeing in Paris is to do things by arrondissement. So if you want to do the Louvre, check around what's near the Louvre and do it all in that one day. So on our four day trip to Paris in April, what we did was we did the Louvre and the Tuileries garden right next to each other. And we had our day there. The next day we did a day in Montmartre. Lunch there, we explored around, we did all the things in that day. We didn't have to keep going back to each neighborhood every single day because we didn't get a lot done. So before you head out and want to explore a neighborhood, maybe make a Google maps list of things that you want to see, some boulangeries 
check out bakeries and patisseries, map out some cafes that you would like to visit or some shops you would like to see in each neighborhood so you know you've done the neighborhood and you don't have to go back on your visit just to make most of your time here in Paris. I highly recommend getting an e-SIM. We are using the Orange Holiday Europe SIM card. It lasts 14 days. And that way when you're not on Wi-Fi, you still have service, which is really important if you don't know where you are and you don't have Wi-Fi access, you can kind of see where you need to go on Google map. You can communicate with restaurants for reservations. If you need to call somebody, you have access, you have a cell phone that works and you can learn and look up things on your phone. You can automate it directly on your phone. You don't need to go into a orange store. In Paris, you can do it right on our phone. We actually activated our SIM card when we were at the museum because we needed a SIM card and we did it right on the spot. Having a SIM card is also dependent on your carrier in the US. I forgot to mention your phone needs to be unlocked, which means you have to own your phone. You, can, you won't be able to access a SIM card. So you, and you may have an international plan from your cell phone provider. It won't be as good as orange, but it will kind of help. And just some random things that I would like to cover. One, there is cobblestones and stairs everywhere. So that means for the shoes that you wear, I wouldn't recommend a super high heel unless you have an Uber to and from where you're going. The stairs are also really a lot in the Metro station. You're gonna walk down a ton of stairs and walk upstairs. And especially if you're transferring trains, you're gonna walk through tunnels. There's just steps everywhere and not every steps have escalators so it's not very accessible so you're going to be doing a lot of walking and a lot of stairs so definitely wear comfortable sneakers throughout the day sightseeing shoes because you're going to be doing a ton of walking and if you looked at my phone records the first thing i googled when i got to paris is is the water drinkable and yes they actually have a very good water system here in paris so you can drink the tap water there's also even tap water stations in this city that you can refill your water bottle out which by the way let me just say one thing bring a small water bottle when you you are sightseeing because the only thing that like we got upset about was being too thirsty. However, the tap water is a little bit harder. Like it is a bit hard. Like my hair, it feels a bit more like salty here. So keep that in mind. The water is a bit harder, but it is 100% safe to drink. When you see a bathroom, use it because there are not a lot of public restrooms here in Paris. So if you're at a cafe and you're drinking, just go to the bathroom before you leave because you have one there. But if you find yourself that you have to use the bathroom and you're sightseeing, you don't know where to use one, I would go to like a bistro or coffee shop, order a coffee and then use the bathroom there. You have to be paying customers to use like bathrooms in restaurants and things, or you can probably find restroom options in department stores, like larger ones. And they also have public toilets on the street. I believe you have to pay for them. And to be honest, I'm not too sure if I would use a public bathroom on the street. So definitely just go to a coffee shop or something and use the bathroom there. But obviously eat something there and then use the bathroom. Now let's talk about weather really quickly. Paris has four seasons and the weather app on your phone, honestly, we found it not to be very accurate. So no matter when you come, it might probably rain when you're here in Paris. So I would bring a small umbrella or a trench coat, especially if you're coming in winter, fall, even summer, I guess. And spring, definitely bring a trench coat because the rain here seems to be very sporadic. It rains really a lot and then it's sunny like five minutes later. And sightseeing, it is so important to book everything in advance, which is so annoying because when it rains, you're like, I want to go to the museum when it rains. So does everyone else. And the line to get into a museum without a ticket when it's raining, you'll probably be waiting in line outside for like two hours because everyone has the same idea. So it's super important to book everything that you want to do in Paris in advance, especially if you are here for a limited amount of days and you want to see as much as possible, you're going to have to plan it and the weather is going to just weather whenever it does. So it kind of sucks because you want to do things when it's sunny outside. But honestly, I'm telling you, you will be waiting in line for a lot. The Louvre, you need advanced tickets. Museums are also closed on certain days of the week. They're not open every single day. The Versailles, you definitely need tickets in advance. That books out. And when you are coming to Paris, just expect lines for the major tourist sites. But if you can book your tickets in advance, you will at least not waste your time just waiting there. So I will also leave a link down below so you can book things in advance. It's super, super important. I'm telling you, I will show you a line. It is honestly such a waste of time to wait in line. So definitely book everything in advance 
ingredients. I will leave a link down below so you can book everything and see all the top things to do in Paris. All right, so there goes all of my Paris travel tips. Let me know down below if you enjoyed this video and be sure to give this video a thumbs up. If you have not already, please subscribe to the channel. I have some Paris vlogs coming out and I have a lot of Paris information on my blog. I will leave the link down below for that. With that, I hope you guys have a super awesome day. Enjoy your next trip to Paris and I will see you in the next one. Bye.